Fellas, I have lost count of how many games we have labeled as Destiny Killers. Anthem, Outriders, New World, the list goes on. It's basically become a meme at this point. And it feels like every one of these games that might have the potential to kill Destiny ends up killing themselves, or at least fail to meet expectations. Now, I think if you ask your average Destiny player what makes it so different from other games, you get a wide variety of answers, ranging from story, raids, PvP, heck, even space magic. There's just something about the combination of these elements between PvP and PvP, the world building, the loot, all those things that keeps you coming back for more. And again, Destiny didn't originally have these things. And when I call out these games and say that they weren't able to slay Destiny, it's not to say that they won't make a comeback. But we have seen the likes of Anthem completely wash out, despite the potential that Anthem had. And I would say above and beyond, Anthem really had it. Unfortunately, it never came to fruition. Now today, I want us to deep dive into a game that may very well be the next Destiny killer, or in the least, that's what it's already being labeled as. Recently revealed in the 2021 Game Awards, Ark Raiders is slated to be a free-to-play, cooperative, third-person shooter where you and your friends play as raiders and team up fighting killer robots from outer space called Ark. Interestingly enough, with a three-man fire team, this looks very similar to Strikes Inside of Destiny. Now, developed by Embark Studios, it's set to release later in 2022 on PS5, Xbox, Steam, Epic Games, and GeForce Now. Now, as far as gameplay is concern, we've only been shown one trailer. Now, initially, I was pretty excited seeing this in action. And ever since New World, which by the way, we played non-stop upon release, I've been on the lookout for another game besides Destiny to really sink some hours into. However, I've got my concerns, which is where we're going to start with Embark Studio. This will be Embark's first title. And given how little actual gameplay we have to go off of, we have no clue if it's actually going to be worth playing. Also, since the game will be based on a free-to-play model, that means that microtransactions will be present. And over the past few years, we've seen plenty of good games ruined due to poor or even predatory implementations of microtransactions into their games. Not only that, the quality of most free-to-play games just isn't there for me. Now, to put your fears and mind to rest, or at least ground them in reality, I've had Luke collect everything there is to know about Embark Studios and Arc Raiders. We're going to be breaking this video into several sections, company background, game development, as well as trailer breakdown. Feel free to skip to any of these timestamps. And with that being said, let's start with the company background. First up, Embark Studio was founded in 2018 by Patrick Soderlund. Hope I'm saying that right. Along with five other former executives of DICE and EA Games. Now, all of these game devs had at least 10 years plus experience working for EA DICE on several franchises, including Battlefield, Mirror's Edge, and Battlefront. Now, Patrick, the executive vice president of EA at the time of his departure, was paid more than any CEO as an incentive for him to stay with EA. Now, after founding Embark Studios, Patrick immediately received funding from Nexon, a subsidiary of NXC Corp. Now, NXE owns many small subsidiary companies, everything from crypto trading to premium baby products and of course pet food. But Nexon is responsible for their gaming initiatives. They own and manage several online and mobile titles, including MapleStory, Alliance vs. Empire, and Darkness Rises, of which the latter of the two are their main sources of revenue. Now, a red flag that can actually be found on their website is that they claim they've pioneered the micropayment and freemium business model. Now, what this translates to is a basic basically invented microtransactions as a way to make increased revenue in games. Now we've seen companies talk about microtransactions in their games, but outright saying and pretty much bragging that they pioneered the freemium business model. It's kind of concerning, right? Does it attract investors? Yes. Does it scream anti-gamer? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Now what's ironic here is that the EA developers would leave behind the microtransaction disaster of Battlefront 2. And now they're immersing themselves in microtransaction shenanigans all over again. Now, I know this is kind of coming off negative, but moving on, Patrick Sunderland, CEO of Embark, now also serves as a member of the Nexon board of directors after Nexon acquired a majority of Embark's stock with plans of full ownership over the next five years. So essentially, invest into Embark, wait until they produce a potential product, then fully acquire the studio when they bring the finished game to the market. Now, Embark Studios, and by extension, Arc Raiders, is Nexon's play not only at creating next generation titles, but also expanding into the American and pan-European markets. Currently, Nexon sits high up 
in the revenue list compared to other game companies. And I wouldn't be surprised if they gun for an even higher spot over the next few years. The question on my mind, will they sacrifice game quality for increases in revenue? Which takes us to the game development phase. Embark has three projects that they are currently working on. One is a PvP shooter, which we have not received details on. Another is Rust, a game creation platform for developers and user-generated content. And the third is Arc Raiders, which is currently in development awaiting release. Now with multiple projects on the table, Embark has had to increase the size of the studio up to 200 plus employees in order to work on these projects in parallel. In addition, they also have to develop new techniques in order to automate much of the game development process to speed up production. This doesn't mean that they have been cutting corners. And from Eric Hallberg here, one of Embark's 3D artists, they've actually automated multiple steps in the creation of 3D models that allows them to focus less time on monotonous, non-artistic tasks and more time actually designing hard surface assets. So essentially, less rendering, more creating. Now, these automated processes have become a necessary part of Embark's workflow due to the next generation features that they are building into Arc Raiders. Now things are going to get a little technical here, but Embark is actually using physical base rendering in order to create a realistic game experience. What this means is they adhere to techniques such as photogrammetry in Unreal Engine 4 to capture real life light physics and use that information in game. Now they're not the first to use physical base rendering in games. Some examples of other titles that use PBR include Battlefront, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Resident Evil. And the idea here is that it gives you a more realistic representation in-game of both people and environments. Now Embark is taking this a step further, particularly in design of the robot enemies using what they call physical base animation. Now normally when you create an in-game character, you will start with the design or the model, then you would animate the program to look and behave how you want. This is helpful when creating fantastical or sci-fi game characters because there are little to no limitations. Embark is using a different approach and instead creating enemies that can actually exist in the real world, taking into account for size, weight, and range of motion. This means no animations are programmed into the enemy AI. And instead, they're using an actual AI machine reinforcement learning to teach the in-game enemies to walk. And this gets rid of problems like ragdolls, looped animations, and stuttering transitions, and creates emergent gameplay where an enemy will react to every situation differently in order to accomplish its goal, whether that be walking or killing players. We made the joke about it when watching the stream that if this AI made the jump to the real world, it would be terrible because they're literally learning how to kill people. Now, all of this sounds really cool and I'm interested to see how it translates in game. However, I'm skeptical. Most of these design choices are made with the primary goal of reducing workforce and time required to make a AAA title. So while it may take less resources, a more efficient workflow doesn't necessarily translate to a better game. It kind of reminds me of like when an anime completely throws animation out and just goes hey for the next two episodes we're just gonna do cgi and there is a huge disparity between good cgi and bad cgi and the common phrase when talking about cgi and anime is unnoticed cgi is actually the best cgi not only that the lingo that's used when talking about ai and robots that can teach themselves to walk it all sounds great but at the same time it seems like it's trying to capture investors more than gamers but when we actually look at the scale of these giant robots and the details present in the 3D environments, I'm tempted, fellas. I want this game to really be next gen. Now, trailer breakdown. We're just going to go through a number of things here. At the one second mark, we actually see an early warning system called Patchwork. It seems to be some sort of radar for detecting robots. At five seconds, we actually get our first look at a roller bot. And they travel in packs, and they can be looted to craft better weapons. Now, at the 15 second mark, we see an old destroyed robot and mini raider helmets, meaning many died in that battle. And the audio actually states that bear Barons, kings, and queens, they're all the same. Killer robots falling from the sky. It's interesting the nomenclature they use here to describe these falling robots. Now, at 20 seconds, we actually see old ruins that'll be able to be scavenged for tools and gadgets. 32 seconds, the audio actually says that this is our home, our bastion of resistance with the tower in the frame, most likely our base. And again, very similar to things like Anthem and of course, Destiny. Now, at 37 seconds, we see the patchwork room. Three raiders present in cover art, dog on the floor. Will we have pets? Highly doubt it, but that'd be pretty dope. At 51 seconds, this giant tube seems to be our method for deploying to where the threat is located. It would make sense 
if this was in the tower we saw earlier and we are launched into the sky with some type of railgun to our desired drop zone. Sounds cool, huh? Very similar to Anthem, which means load zones, right? Now, 55 seconds, you see we can roll. Yeah, next gen, baby. Now, at the one minute mark, we see two characters that do not appear anywhere else in the press release. Most likely, we'll have five playable characters. Now, at one minute and 10 seconds, we see a snap hook, which is used to reel in a scout. This same tool will be used as a grappling hook. Now, at a minute and 14 seconds, we actually see scouts scanning the area for raiders. Now, upon locating the raiders, the same drones from 58 seconds start firing rockets at the players. Now, at a minute and 30 seconds, audio actually sets confirmed impact. Baron is on the ground and proceeds to show a walker. So, Baron equals walker. And at a minute and 43 seconds, we actually see two unknown characters again. The same two we just talked about, left and middle. Now, at a minute and 57 seconds, you see bounce pads used to launch over the walker. And at two minutes and 17 seconds, this could actually be a queen or king walker. Slightly different design than the other walker that was just fought. So guys, that's about everything we know about Ark Raiders. Now, personally, I am looking forward to this game. It is entirely possible it will suck. But given the experience of the developers and the results we've seen from trailers and other media the enemy's environment if they're able to keep microtransactions in check and this ai learning system actually is as great as they're saying it is maybe this game won't be cursed like so many of the other destiny killers well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right